something I think that the other video series did was review the names of the common carboxylic acid derivatives. I don't know how many of those you had a chance uh, to learn. Um, do you happen to remember the names of any of these? Um, I, 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 I can't recall them off the top of my head. No. Okay, well let's review that. We're using X to stand for halogen here, like we usually do. So this is an acyl halide. This is an anhydride. This is an ester, not an ether. Ethers are something different. Oftentimes people confuse esters and ethers. This is an ester, not an ether. And this is an amide. I think that can also be pronounced amide. And these are all considered carboxylic acid derivatives. video series covered reactivity. Um, do you remember which of these is the most reactive? Uh, or how we can decide which is the most reactive? The uh, acyl halide. Right, this is the most reactive. This is the least reactive. Now, you should know how to explain why, uh, and these are in order of reactivity. So this is most reactive, then anhydrides, then esters, and then this is the least reactive. It's important to be able to explain that reactivity, um, but uh, we won't have time to review that again. That's in a bunch of the videos. So that's something you can review again on your own. We should also just have memorized. This is the reactivity. Well, does that mean that, so if we start with an ester, mm -hmm. is it easy to make the ester into the anhydride, or is it easy to make the ester into an amide? Is it easy to move up the table or down the table? It's, uh, it's easy to move down the table. Yeah, you can think of that almost like rolling downhill. It's easy to move down a hill. Or it's easy to move down the table. How do you move down the table? Well, you use those nucleophilic attacks on carboxylic acids and acid derivatives, which is one of the main things that was covered in that other video series. That's what esterification involved. Esterification involved a nucleophilic attack on a carboxylic acid to make an ester. So we can have various nucleophilic attacks that turn one of these compounds into another, well, it's pretty easy to attack an ester and move to something that is more stable. But it's not very easy to move up the table. So which of these compounds is the easiest to make? to make. It's the most stable, which means it's the happiest. And which of these is the hardest to make? The acyl halide. Right. But notice, once we've made the acyl halide, we're sitting pretty. Because once we made the acyl halide, we can make anything else. So it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. If we could only make the acyl halide, we can make anything else we want. But how do we get up here? Well, there's a special reaction to get up here to the top of the mountain. Carboxylic acid plus thionyl chloride. Carboxylic acid plus thionyl chloride. That gives us an acyl chloride. Acyl halide is the general term for these compounds, but an acyl chloride would be when we have the chlorine. You might have saw the, seen in the other uh, video series that we could call all of these pieces the L groups. It's always important to be able to identify the L group. So here we're trying to replace an OH L group with a chlorine L group. Your instructor did talk somewhat about the mechanism for this reaction in the lecture notes, but I don't think it's usually too important a mechanism to go through when you're predicting the product. So to save time, we won't go through the mechanism. We're just going to memorize. So this makes this very simple. 
This is a very simple reaction where we simply replace the OH L group with the chlorine L group. We're simply going to replace the OH L group with the chlorine L group without making any other changes, and we're, we won't go through the mechanism. I don't think that's going to be too important. This is only for carboxylic acids. I don't think this would have the same effect on, on these. You've got to start with the carboxylic acid. By the way, what type of functional group is this? You might have learned in an earlier term that thionyl chloride has a similar effect on alcohols. Ultimately, it replaces the alcohol with the chlorine okay. without making any other changes. Um, so uh, basically, this is a good way to replace hydroxy groups with chlorines. In both cases, we replace the hydroxy group with the chlorine without making any other changes. And again, we won't go through the mechanism for this. Well, this is very helpful. So if you're trying to synthesize any of the things in this table, maybe a good way to start is start with a carboxylic acid. Add thionyl chloride. That puts you up here. Okay. And then you can make anything down here that's down below. That anything would just end up being a nucleophile. Yeah, so for example, if we start with the chloride, we can take what, what would we have to add as the nucleophile to make an ester? Uh, let's, let's be more specific. Let's say we want to make this into this. What nucleophile do we need to add to this to introduce this L group? What nucleophile could attack here that would introduce this L group? Um, it could be just, it could be. Uh, could you? Uh, could you just attack with the base? Now the key thing is we need to introduce an oxygen and two carbons. Sure. We need to introduce an oxygen and two carbons. Now theoretically, one way you could do that is just like this. Sure. Okay. And then it seems like it would work to me. Um, but we, we don't usually think in those terms. We usually think of a neutral nucleophile okay. that we can add. Well, the neutral nucleophile we could add is ethanol. And then it's going to get deprotonated. That's the okay. key. That's something that maybe we've talked about a little bit in earlier sessions and you might have seen me talking about in the videos. I've mentioned a couple times, it's very hard for people to realize that the way to make an ester is with an alcohol mm -hmm. because the L group doesn't look like an alcohol anymore because as part of the reaction, it's going to deprotonate. And this is something that messes people up on lots of syntheses. Usually, if you have a neutral nucleophile, it's going to end up deprotonating at some point and then it won't look like what it started with. And it's hard to realize that you started with the, the protonated form in the first place. So how do you introduce an OR group? You do that with an HOR group, which will then deprotonate. All right, so that was a good question. So we could use this to attack here. Um, and in the course of that reaction, we won't go through the whole mechanism. Um, uh, I think that's covered in some of the other videos that I have on carboxylic acid derivatives. But in the course of the reaction, this has to deprotonate, because otherwise it would have a positive charge. Uh, and then it will look like this. Okay. So how do you add an OR group with an HOR, with an alcohol? So by the same token, how can we add an NH2 group? Right. If you have ammonia yeah. attack here, eventually it will deprotonate and turn into this. So that would be a good way to make this amide. Or how would we add this leading group? What nucleophile do we need to have attacking? Um, it's the same principle. Maybe we could have um, a carboxylic acid. No. You figured it out. That's right. You would have this, you just have this same fragment, but with an extra proton. You would have the same fragment, but with an extra proton, which will eventually get lost in the course of the reaction. Otherwise, it would end up with the charge. So you, um, I was saying earlier that you can easily make an acyl halide into any of these things that are lower down, and now we've seen how to do that. If, an, if, an, if a carboxylic acid attacks the acyl halide, after it deprotonates, that gives you an anhydride. Or if an alcohol attacks the acyl halide, then after it deprotonates, that gives you an ester. 
or if an, uh, if an amine or ammonia attacks a acyl halide, then after that deprotonate you get an amide. Those are very important ones. So we really are sitting pretty now that we have this reaction. Once we can get to the top of the chart with this acyl halide, we can then produce anything else we want down below. Incidentally, in case you need it, this is the full structure of thionyl chloride. So you might see it just written out like this. Right. I'm really bad at writing in the corner. 